Oh, you're the only one left here. <laughs> How do you feel about E17? You know what it looks like? An elderly Tibetan man. <laughs> Rose is displeased. What to do? In 1912, in gyms, was there any form of music oh, pumping out? Yeah. It's just a wee, wee bit of Brahms. A wee bit of back. Because <laughs> it's back day. These boats were tested in the port of Belfast with a weight of 70 men. That's when uh, Billy Zane realises that he put the gem into the coat. And I put the coat on her! There's nothing I fear. Great song. It's been 84 years <laughs> since I got bucked in the back of a car. Why? I'll just go. Is it? Hello and welcome to this episode of Mythstories, the podcast where we decide is this mystery or history. Yep. Can I say something before we start? Well, great top. Thank you, mate. Uh, first of all, I like that. Now, were those bought together? No. Your cardigan and your hat? No, because they don't. They don't match. They're different colors of green. Nobody would know. You wouldn't even. It's Mandela effect. You'd look at you and assume they do. Really? Yeah. I'll take it. It's up. the knitted Mandela. Effect. I have. I have. Uh, I have one that's that exact shade though. I actually have two. I have that. that. Exact I have that in the house. Yeah, yeah. it's on a teapot. <laughs> this guy. No, hurt and feelings before we get started. I'll say this. Um, I really like the music of One Direction. Non ironically, I think One Direction has some great pop hits. Right. What would a One Direction song be? I think I only know one or two of them. Mm, what makes you beautiful? Oh. Night changes. Little things. There's definitely one that, that I know. Wrote. There's there's millions. What's their biggest song? What makes you beautiful? What was it called? Baby, you light up my world like nobody else. The way that I have you heard flip. That. Of course you. Well, wait, is night, change, night changes sounds like night one changes is one of the big ones. Don't know why I said it. All right, all right. But listen, what I'm saying is this: my favorite ever One Direction song is called History. Ironically enough, and it's the best. But it came out, I think, on their last album. They were sort of like they lost a little bit of that heat. Still huge, but it's brilliant. But I would like to rework it. The original goes, oh, I'm not going to sing for you, but the original one goes, goes I guess, you and me got a whole lot of history. history. I've oh, heard that one. We could be the greatest team that the world has ever seen. seen. You and me. But I, I want to rework it. Right. Now, I, if this is lame or whatever, just edit it out. Lame pain. Yeah, nice. <gasps> Put a lot out of there, Cole. Lame pain. <laughs> um, if this is no good, cut it out. But if it's could leave it in. You and me gonna solve a mystery. Whoa. We could be the greatest part that the world has ever seen. seen. I like you it. You and me gonna solve another mystery. Give us some mystery. more volume. This is a wee bit Damien Rice here. You and me gonna solve another <laughs> mystery. Oh, We could be we the greatest part that the world has ever seen. I like that. You and me. I like that. But like History is also the name of one of my uh, favourite Funeral for a Friend songs from the second album, Ours. Okay. And you're talking out of yours? It was a single. It was a single. Okay. It did a video about the Welsh Manning strike anyway. Okay. Like arches in your arches. Weird it's weird when you're on a pod. Fucking fringes like that and all. Yo, history is mine. Anyway, all the emos, all, all our emo fans out there love it. Do you know what Amos do? Read history books because yeah. we're all we feelers anyway. Read right? the angst which sounds away. weird. So today's episode, we're gonna investigate uh, the sinking and discovery of the Titanic. Oh boy! The RMS. Here, here Titanic. tell you what. Can I tell you something? Oh, you're even left here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so lots to go through here. Obviously, there's some shit. You're bound to know some shit about this. Have you been to the museum? The Titanic Museum in Belfast. There. I've performed But you there, haven't gone around the exhibition? No. How do you feel about E17? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you know what it doesn't look like? E17. E17. You know what it looks Stay like? Stay now. You know what it looks like? <laughs> An elderly Tibetan man. <laughs> E17. <laughs> yeah man, you look like Brian Harvey. <laughs> you look like Brian Blessed. <laughs> Oh, he's just a loud cunt. You me? look like Harvey uh, Milk. Uh, see what you did there. Yeah. So, so uh, right. 
Can, let's do if you're Titanic. asking me what I know about it, all right. I do know a little bit about the Titanic. When did it sink? Uh, two years ago or so? Was it in COVID? 1912. Yes. Yeah. 1912. Yeah. I know shit about it. All right. Well, what do you know? You tell me what you know. I'll tell you what. See, to actually launch it from the dry dock, you know they had to use a lot of bars of soap. Really? Yep. They had to literally use soap. Mental. To push push it into the into the water. I yep. don't know it. I don't know. I don't know quite a bit about it. Have you been through that exhibition at the museum? No. Nope. Here's what I'd say about that. It's great. Money trap. It's a wee. It's a wee. Do you know there's some good stuff in it? It's a bit shit in it, Dan. Right. So like, do you know what's disappointing? I think the most disappointing thing about that place is that that big grand staircase is the thing that you want to go see because it's like the grand staircase off the you ship. You do it as part of it? And it's not part of the tour. Because when you do a corporate gig in that's the Titanic, where it is. you perform at the bottom of that staircase. Yeah. Somebody tried to get me to perform on that staircase one time and I was like, lads. Oh, like Fred Astaire? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I, I can't do this. Like, um, So it was like... Fred can't do stairs? It's good. Uh Thanks. No, it's, only, it's my feelings, but um. So I just mean you can't dance on them. I can't. I can't. I can't. Here, I can't dance on the flat. Like, let's be serious. Um, I can't dance on the flat. I know. Prefer doing it. I like doing it on ice or on on hills. But anyway, um, so the ship was ship was built, uh, for a few years before nineteen twelve. It was they sort of finished, actually building it here. I think in like nineteen eleven, and it launched. And then they, they kept working on it, obviously, do the interiors and all that shit. So it was made by Harlan and Wolf. It cost $1.5 million, which if you, and if you went to build it today, it would cost you $150 million. That's actually not, like, a lot. No, all if you were right. telling Here, me, like, listen, we all, we all no, haven't done ship. full runs at the Opera House, Shane. That's, that's a lot of Yeah, because I got £150 million <laughs> pound for that. No, I just mean... Do you know what I'm thinking of doing? Do you, do you want to know this? Yeah. Genuinely? So I'm doing that run at the Opera House. Right. You're going to do residency I think, I think I'm doing, I think I, what I would love to do is do something silly with the money from one of those gigs. Like what? We bet. You want to do a bet? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sidebar, sidebar. What do you mean you want to do a bet? Like a wee bet, like a wee, like a wee three to one. Like find something that's with going. What percentage of the money? No, with like one show, which is ludicrous. I've never bet anything like that before. I think most I've ever well, bet on Well, talk about fuck, in, for a in for a penny. In for a penny. In for a penny. In for a penny, in for 15 grand. <laughs> <laughs> it's ludicrous, isn't it? Assume, I'm not allowed. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I won't do it. Uh, do you know what? I should give it to charity. I should give one show's worth. I'm not doing that either, but I should. <laughs> I should. I've been doing we we bits. Anyway, right, so here. Why don't you take, if you want to, why don't you take one money's worth, bet half of it, give the other half charity? That's interesting. What I might do is bet all of it and have a win. Give give, give some of it to charity. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. Don't don't okay. bet. Come on. Yeah, move your mic away. Okay, wait. That's a good And I don't bet either. That's a good time. What do you think of that? I think that's great. Cause I love that game. Right. Anyway, like I, I love roulette. Anyway, like I'm not allowed it. I'm not <laughs> allowed it. It's not cheese. No, but I no, but I, I'm not allowed that either. <laughs> I I love it. Right. Anyway, right. So it would be a hundred. Was there a casino on the Titanic? I don't think so. No. The, what they did have though. So a couple of wee things. So let's look at the luxury of the Titanic first. Right. Anyway, all, sorry, I always end at 150 million. You know, price everything nowadays. Huh? I was I think it'd be more to build it. Yeah, okay. uh, no, no, 150 million though for a fucking boat, like. It's true. Um, right, so, uh, plus you'd be building it to the spec of like a hundred years ago. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, right, so let's look at some. So the grand staircase, Dan. This this is the staircase. This is, uh, that that's literally it. Like I mean, absolutely sensational. They've built that in the, in the what do you call it in the center, and obviously they made one for the. The movie, James Cameron, nineteen ninety seven, great film. Did you like the movie? Did you go see the movie? Went to see it. Thought it was absolutely brilliant. It like I thought it was great. I love it. Like w me and Chloe watch this twice a year. Weird. Why is that weird? There's no movie I'd watch twice a year. No, there definitely is. once. A I year. need. I need any movie, no matter how great I think it is. I need five years in between watching. Oh. Okay. 
I couldn't watch a movie twice in a year. No way. Do you know what I do? I uh, I have a problem with projecting things that I see in the, my life. So, like, I'll see the old couple holding each other's hands, weeping when the water starts coming, and I'd be like, that's us. Right? Yeah. I have a problem with that. I, like, I can't even watch first dates because when people are being weird, I'm like, I'm not like that. And she's like, I know you're not, but you fuck up. Yeah, right. I have a problem. Anyway, other other uh, other luxuries they had. Uh, this is the first class lounge. This is based off of. Um, this is actually Dan. I believe this is actually the. It looks like every local I think hotel. Is, I think that's the restaurant. I think that's the restaurant. I know no, it's not a restaurant. You're not sitting in chairs like that. That's not. The I restaurant. think it is. I think that is the restaurant. That's the that's the restaurant. That based on on the uh, on the Ritz in Paris, and the, the menu is based on that. Um. So, uh, well, this here's is the, thing. the gym. I, I heard that most of the shots of the interior aren't actually from the Titanic. They're from one of their sister ships. Oh, really? Because they had to finish the Titanic so quickly. They didn't have time. So oh, fuck. Like I didn't 90% know that. of interior pictures are actually from, what are the, the Britannia, is it? The Britannia or... The or what was the other one? What was the other one? The Olympia? Olympia. Yeah. Uh, this is the gym. I mean, oh, I, do you know what? I you you don't even think of gyms back then. No, do you? but you look, don't think of some boy. There's on. a horse. Look, they'll have a horse, pommel horse. Yeah, yeah. And Just like, for the audio listeners, you probably need to specify that. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, this is the sort of gym though where you, where men would lift r- large kettlebells and uh, then box each other like that. Yeah, who's I'll, who's? I'll buff you. I love it. Um, and uh, you don't think of boys back in 1912 and all being like, here I'm waiting. And we're gonna get a wee, a wee gym session in here. No, in gym I mean, say, say to be fair as well. Say, if I, say if I was on a boat where there's a restaurant that's based off of the Ritz. I mean, and even if there wasn't, basically, say if I was on a boat and there's like the wee restaurant from the HSS on there, I'm not going to the gym. Right. You know also, I mean? one thing I'll say about the gym, which is a bit shit, no TV show on Sky Sports News. Yeah, you need that. Uh, do you know what? I'd love to know what music was on in there because Dragon, Dragon, the the wee string quartet that played near my God, the they would come down j- and during the gym session. A wee bit of a logical song. It's, on a, the- it's it's a great point of, and I think if people will. If this is an underrated point you bring up. In 1912, in gyms, was there any form of music <laughs> pumping out? <laughs> Just a wee, wee bit of Brahms. A wee bit of back. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's back day. Ah, this guy. Uh, Beethoven, because I'm going to bait my way. No, I was scrapper. Anyway, yeah, right, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I should have just, I hit myself. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to go home and and, and, and and like mull how shit that was yep. for ages, right, anyway. So so that's uh, that's the gym. The 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 first class lounge was actually based on the the Palace of Versailles. It's all very oh, wow. grand. So this is right. where this is where they're sinking the uh, this is where they're sinking the old coin, right? Now uh, here's some of the people. By the way, no spoilers because I haven't seen the end of the movie. That's the that's the the outer view of the boat leaving uh, leaving Southampton, Southampton on the 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 tenth the tenth of South the tenth of April. <laughs> The tenth of Southampton and the tenth of Southampton. Nineteen Belfast on the tenth of Southampton. <laughs> so it went from Southampton, I think, to Cherbourg in in, in France, and then from Cherbourg to uh, Cove in in Cork. Yeah, well, and then it was Queenstown. Queenstown, Cove, and then went. I, sorry, to, I actually didn't know that. I and then went straight. and then went from there across uh, and met its fate. Now we can we we'll have a picture of the map. Did you know? I know vaguely where it is. If you put the map up, I'll tell you where it is. So it's a different map. Uh, is it? It's. Is nah, it? Are you ma- shitting yourself now, Kieran? I know where it is though. I on the, on your wee map. Right. Okay. Well, that actually has it. No, that's great. That's great. So that was that was the plan anyway, and then obviously. Sorry again. You're saying that was the plan. Yeah. I haven't seen the end of the movie. <laughs> so I don't really know. Well, where where the boat is there is basically where. And then they get to sank. New York and it's all good. It would have been. What do you mean? I love that scene in Ghostbusters too, where the Titanic arrives and I go, he it's you got to take this. He said the Titanic just arrived and it and it shows up and it's Cheech Marin, you know the comedian. Cheech and Chong. Yeah, it's him sitting there watching the people walking off the Titanic all and there's a big hole in the side of the ship and he goes, well. Better late than never. Um, right. Great banter. Anyway, so it obviously struck the iceberg 
and it went down at that point. It was discovered in 1985, the wreckage, right? So really, lots to talk about here. Again, didn't know it. Lots to talk about, right? So let's go through some of the people that were on it. Um, this is the interesting. Elite, yeah. So so in terms of the the crew, uh, we had the captain E. J. Smith. That Very sounds like sorry. Captain. That sounds like you're in a stag. All the crew here, the captains oh, yeah. here, the EJ crew. Smith. The lads. <laughs> here he is, the lads. Look at this, the him in his weights. And he looks, he, looks, he looks like a hipster as well. Yeah, why well, he dressed up like a sailor? It's not fancy <laughs> dress, I could. So, um, it's a great beard, isn't it? He's, he's very Captain Birdseye, isn't he? Like the actual guy I, on I the fish I would say they box. model Captain Birdseye on people like him, not I the think other so. way around. Aye, aye. <laughs> Uh, but isn't he? He's like that. Looks like he, he yeah. looks like he's had a few fishy fingers in his days. And then, mm -hmm. uh, handsome bastard. Yeah. So he was a very experienced naval captain. Then uh, there's also first officer Murdoch, who we have a picture of, who's the guy. Then so right. So there's Contesta. That's great pick. Is that me? Uh, so there's Contesta. No, you're you're one of the radio operators. So the um, there's his end is contested basically. So some people oh. say, and they showed this in the movie, where one of the officers is meant to have shot a few lads and then turned a gun on himself in shame. Uh, and people say it was him. Uh, second officer, Lightoller, if we show a picture, an unbelievable life, by the way, which we'll have to talk about, Charles Lightoller, he Good said name. at the inquiry that uh, he last saw Murdoch helping load one of the last boats before a wave came and swept him into the sea. But there's thinking there that he was trying to prevent Murdoch's family from knowing that's Max what he did. Dog my homework. Yeah, yeah. Dog, I see, dog like at you. my homework, see at my mate, who definitely didn't shoot people and then kill himself. He looks a bit like you. Looks like me. Yeah, a wee bit. Interesting. He had a, he, would he hear this guy's life? This is fucking unbelievable. So he was like, he was on boats for me. He was like 13, right? And he, he was in fucking, like, Australia and Canada and all, right? I mean, at this time, this is, like, in the late 1800s. He's not flying Emirates? No. He's he's boating White Star Line and other fucking Cunard Line and all this, right? So he fucking, he ends up over in Canada in the Yukon, which is, like, far side of Canada doing gold prospecting. He failed at that. He worked his way back across Canada, basically, as a as a hobo, like, just riding the rails on the, of the trains. Thank God, that's and, not what I thought you said at the start. I, I know, well, and uh, here, works work. And um, and uh, he liked it wet and salty one way or another, so he, um, he gets back across Canada, gets on, like, another boat and gets back to England and then, and then joins, basically, the Merchant Navy and becomes like this, right? He survived a sinking. He survived... Uh, a fire on a boat which he put out himself apparently in the coal room and fucking was like upgraded then from being like a low league sort of guy to being like third officer on the ships he then becomes like second officer on the titanic he survived the sinking of the titanic um he testified at the inquiries in america and, and uk and then became a fucking captain of a ship during world war one where he sunk a, a german u-boat uh, and and allegedly, he was well. He was he was accused of a war crime by the captain of that U-boat, who said he turned the the guns of the ship on the basically the sunk German sailors, like they were obviously floating up to the top after being sunk off this U-boat, and he's meant to have uh, ordered the killing of a load of them. He uh, sorry, is there a law that like during war? If you're on a boat and you're trying to kill people on another boat and then you fall off your boat, they just have to like let you swim away. Ah, uh, <laughs> etiquette. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's like, do you ever be in a, in a do you ever be in like a, a bumper car race and someone falls out of the car? You let them live. You know what I mean? Yeah, very different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then he, uh, after that, he was given medals and he became basically then like a civilian again where he was like. Uh, he was uh, working in different, like he had a business in uh, like down near the bottom of England, I can't remember where it was, Southampton or Dover or somewhere. Gosh. And, but then his son was a pilot in World War Two who uh, died. And then he took part in the evacuation of Dunkirk. He was one of the little ships, the armada of boats that went across he can't and stay evacuated away from Dunkirk. The, the drama. Man, he loves it. He fuck. He loves it. I'll say this. See if you want your ship to fucking not sink. Don't have that company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, lo He's he, a liability. he loves it, right? He live. Do you know what he is? 
Charles Lightoller is the driver who rakes through you on the motorway and lives and leaves carnage in his wake, yep. right? Yep. Now, that's harsh because I think he's a fascinating historical figure, but... All right, he's not going to shag you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's unbelievable. There's no comeback from it. So, so um, he, he then, he, he died of uh, like natural causes or whatever in the... No. I want to say like the sixties or summer fifties, but he he lived a fucking very full life. Then we also have Thomas Andrews. So this is the guy who designed the ship. The he designer, was a yeah. naval architect, head of design nice at Harlem and Wolf. Guess what school he went to? Do you know? Do you know this? No. Inst. Okay. So he probably talked a little bit like you know, do you know? Are we going to play? Uh, are we playing against Methody or Sully Upper today? Yeah. Um. He was probably a ball bag if he went in. I mean, uh, have you ever met anybody that wasn't one of my best? To mates. be fair, one of my mates is, yeah, is yeah. sound, and I like him, and he's Don't judge he went in. Yeah. Uh, great rugby player as well. Uh, very nearly made as a pro. Oh, got a hip injury. He might. He might. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. What? Uh, so anyway, so that's Thomas Andrews. He's the guy in the movie who's like. These boats were tested in the Port of Belfast with the weight of 70 men. <laughs> I love acting, people acting here. So uh, that actor's also in Alias and Sleepless since Seattle. I'll have to say that. Yes, I can't remember his name just now. I know, he's one of those guys. In he's, a he's, that, he's a that guy. So yeah. um, that guy, anyway. He's so he He went down with the ship. This guy he stayed there. He tried to, he actually, he, he was the first, one of the first people that realised they were fucked. He went and inspected the... No. the the reason he died is because he, he, he went around everyone being like, ah, Pat, he designed this ship. I don't know who he is, but it's probably not his fault. He probably doing that literally flat out and then he went, but... Oh. You remember what I told you about the lifeboats, don't you, Rose? Yeah. Oh, mate. Your wee asshole's twitching there. Do you know what's a great little fact about him, though? See that scene in Titanic where Jack and Rose run through the, like, the room and he's standing, checking his time against the clock? Uh... That is actually an eyewitness report from the thing that that's where he he was last seen at that clock Fucking checking the time. Watch. Checking the time. Get off the boat. Uh, so he, what was he uh, checking time for? He knew he knew he couldn't get off the boat. If he'd survived, he that uh, would not have been good for him because he. Well, you know what's worse for him? Death. Well, this is the thing. This is the thing, though. So. The the I was reading about this, so it actually had. It's room. mental that they're, they're like people like captains of boats or someone like him has the thought of ah, fuck, it looks like I'm just gonna have to die then. That's that's being a man though. No, it's going not. Going down with a ship, right? That's not being a man, and it, mate. It's we're gonna go, we're gonna idiot. we're gonna go through some stats, right? They actually had room and the ability to unload sixty four lifeboats. Can we can they we had, maybe do this had, later in the story and get? Sorry, like, they had twenty. We've just left. Cove, so right. We've left Cove. Everything's great. The boat's running well. All these famous people are on board. Molly Brown, oh, JJ, J, J, yeah, JJ Astor, uh, richest one of the richest people on earth. Uh, Guggenheim, Benjamin Guggenheim's on it. The Guggenheim Museum is named after him and all, right? So, like, a lot of rich people. W.T. Stead, the uh, inventor, the, the founder of tabloid journalism is on there. Um, some people... Now, there's a story, I don't know if this is true, the story of Myth Jack Johnson, the boxer. Mystery or history? Well, it, th there's talk that this is a bit of both, right? So, Jack Johnson, the heavyweight champion, uh, very famous black athlete, apparently... Tragic, tragic life. Wanted, wanted to get on this boat, apparently, and go first class, and apparently they wouldn't let him. And then whenever the boat sank, he was like, oh, well. Yep. And, and was like... How 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 happy are you at that moment? By the way, we should do an episode on him. Yeah, very interesting. Um, and career. Not a, not as uh, not as cool though as Jack Johnson, the banana pancake singer. But anyway, um, upside down. What's that we won? The the other we won that he did. Be fine. Oh, oh, on the back of a postcard. Yeah, yeah, it goes. There's no combination of words I can put on the back of a postcard. I've never seen Dan more passionate about anything in his life because Jack Johnson's like a surfer guy, Big like surfer. a white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Vespasian hates it, right? He so, um, right. So, boat has it, it's going, it's got all these. I, I read about it, but I can't be fucking going through it. All stuff to do with like so how powerful strong it was people in the world on it. And, a big, and a big powerful engine. And, and people are saying so this has a big, big powerful song. engine, just to double check. This is a big powerful engine. Yeah, it's got about Se yep. 72,000 horsepower. There you go. Right. Three propellers. 
massive, massive boat, right? Uh, apparently, though, only three of those uh, chimneys uh, were needed, and the other one was just for aesthetics, which I enjoy. Because people thought it was better, but you had four. Yeah, so they just it was grander. Out. So so it's sailing across. It's its maiden voyage. How long was it supposed to take? Was so, it 21 days? So they were, they were gone. More? They were gone. All right. It was supposed to uh, dock in New York on the 15th. So, uh, but possibly the 16th, but they were hoping it would get there in, well, five days. I think it was five. It's five days from Southampton. It's slightly slower than some of the other ones because of the luxury. They don't push it as hard. Right. Uh, and so when they get in towards that that North Atlantic bit, there's, they start getting warnings uh, from other ships, specifically the California I uh, start sending them more ice warnings. Now, ice, ice at this time of year, April, in that area, very normal, and you just need to slow down and sort of navigate through it. Now, the, the uh, when they were on maneuvers, like learning how to like run the ship, there somebody, uh, there, there was binoculars in the crow's nest for the guys to keep an eye out, and <coughs> that box was locked, and the person who locked it, took the key with them, and then never got back on the ship because they rotated some of the staff after those manoeuvres. So, like, uh, I think it was basically something like first officer got replaced and everyone else got bumped up one, that sort of a thing. So, uh, you know, who the guy who was first officer became first mate and so on. Uh, and, and so that person had the key and tried to get back to the boat with it and never made it. So they had binoculars, but they couldn't open the box. So the guys in the crow's nest break in. Says, yeah, why, why didn't they break in? It's not because because people a... because they didn't believe there was anything wrong, and it was sort of like a thing of if you break the box, you have to pay for it yourself. That's the that also, is also right. binoculars weren't as important because they weren't look to like to see an iceberg. They were looked to see details. So when they were looking for icebergs, they would have just used their eyes. They weren't using binoculars. Right. Okay. The binoculars were used to see details within objects interesting so they don't think it would have made right, a okay. difference well basically they see this fucking iceberg too late right and they try to port around it which was like to turn turn left around it and and you be, I read about this but I can't really remember but wait here suck my dick everybody there's a picture of the the one that they believe is the Titanic iceberg uh, where they say that the shadow here looks fake well, this is what this. This is a picture from the time Looks like where they say there's red paint on on the bottom of it. There, a streak of red paint. I think Whether, Mark McCarney called you out and made a joke on No Blasters podcast. He did. And you're trying to. This is the picture that I saw though that was in the National Geographic, and I went and found it, and I believe it. From okay. the time. Apparently, the iceberg would have melted in four to six weeks after the incident. Massive. So. Well, this is this is apparently though from the one of the rescue ships is meant to have taken this spoof, because that's Sarah's what they're one. doing instead of picking up survivors, <laughs> take a picture. Well, the the, the fucking matter, they didn't really pick up any survivors. Did they? they hardly fucking saved any cunt out of the water anyway? So one guy who did survive in the water this is a great wee fact. Was, get away. He was he was drunk. He was drunk. Get away. He was drunk to a perfect amount. It was enough to keep him warm. Without like shutting the systems down, right? So he actually survived, and he's in the movie. He's one of the last people in the water. I mean, see to be How fair, long do you think he was in there for Bob? A, a couple of hours. See, see to be fair, see, see James. Who was Cameron, it? Wim Hof. See James Cameron's version of this. There's so many things that he doesn't go into all the. He doesn't go. This There's is no the guy who survived because he was drinking. Shows you a guy fucking drinking. No one going into the drink, and then you see him later. Doesn't say anything. Like it's just. It, yeah, I mean, yeah, we Easter eggs all over it, right? Like the the priest, that priest was a real person. The priest who's like saying the fucking act of contrition for people and all, that's real. He he was on his way to marry <laughs> marry his brother, uh, if you know what I mean. He was on his way to conduct his brother's wedding ceremony in America and never made it. So anyway, uh, they see this iceberg. They try to turn around it. It doesn't work. The iceberg under the water line strikes the boat and like rips part of it along the boat which is the very thing if they just blasted through it they may have been okay but it might have ripped the bottom but the whole the whole point is the titanic is built in such a way where it has these compartments under the water line which can allow certain amount of water in 
but it was only designed to let, I think... I think there were 16 in total. And four of them could four float, could. but not five. And it was five. And, and it was it started coming over the top then as it started to go down. It starts going into the following compartments all the way to the back. And then the boat eventually, like, so it, start, it, it starts to break then. Yes. Because the front's getting heavier. And then it breaks. It starts breaking at the top. And then it goes like that. And then it's bobbing there. The bottom detaches and the rest of it like floats around for a wee bit and then it just goes down under it as well. But it, it takes quite a while. T it, t it took two hours and 40 minutes from the strike, uh, which was at what, like 20 to 11, I think, was it? Isn't it funny when you watch a movie and, and then it's like, like 2.20, is that you like, just walk to the top and then hang on there. When you watch the I know, movie yeah, as a kid, you're you're like, like, I know, yeah. Wait at the top? It's like, get into the lift and then just before it smashes to the ground, just jump. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, loads of people obviously I listen, would do that. There was 2,224 people on it, and 1,514 of them died. So this is where you get into the stuff to do with how, what did they try to do to save people, right? So they had a Marconi radio operation, ra radio, radio room, basically, which could do 24-hour uh, like Morse code signals, right? So this was like a new thing. So here's the two radio operators, Jack Phillips and Harold Bread. So Harold Bride, that's our Zhishin, um, so he survived. He was the junior uh, radio operator, and that's Jack Phillips. So Jack is the one who, when the California were sending ice warnings, he was trying to tap through messages for passengers to New York and back to London as well, or wherever, back to England. And uh, he was doing telegrams, and he literally said to them, shut up, shut up, I'm doing messages here. And so the California went, right, well, and they they turned off the night, right? And so he stayed there after the ship was hit. They fired these rockets, like, uh, what do you call it? Um, yeah, like uh, distress signals. And he they he was doing the new the new one, which was called, what's it, a CPD or something like that? The new... The SOS. SOS. It was the old SOS. The CPD, was... the rockets. Anyway. Well, I think it was OSOS, the old SOS. <laughs> so he was doing SOS, right? And that, uh, which is three long dashes, three short the NSOS. ones. Do you know what? The new SOS. Three. I'll never need the no bro. It's, you it's might, you might. Here, you never know. Three long dashes, three yeah. short dot, three dots, three dashes. I think that's Eiffel 65. As blue. opposed to. Which is SMS. Did you know that's SMS in Morse code? No. That we remember that used to be your message tone. SMS. That's what that means. Top banter. Now anyway, CQD was the old CQD. That's what was. What's CPD? Um, CBD. That thing you take the chill out. Oh, just fucking. Do you know what it does? Man, it makes music better. No. He stayed there sending messages right to the end. He told him to go save himself, which he he did. He, Seriously, Jack, he's like Jack Phillips stayed there. He was he was literally sending distress signals, and it cuts out halfway through because the water came in. Right, so lots of craziness. Uh, How did Harold Bragg get off? He got he got off on one of the uh, on one of the um, one of the lifeboats. So what was on the women and children? Well. They do so. They do the women and children first. Come and bring up the stats, Dom. The stats are interesting. So this is a wee breakdown. Uh, yeah, give it a second. All right, we'll have a wee breakdown of uh, the statistics of where where you get saved, basically, uh, from where you. Hold were... on, do you send him emails? I yeah. About this, where you research? Yeah, every night. Not every right. night. Nights before we do this. Right. Yeah, I made three week documents for this week's recordings. Yeah. I'm, I made orga four. I'm organized that way. <laughs> so um, basically, like if you were if you were a woman in first class or a child in first class or second class, good chance, You're good chance off. of getting off this, right. right? Good high percentage. If you were a male in third class, Nine eight, ho bro. hope you like salt water, mate, because uh, no one gives a fuck about you. Right. So I there are stories of people in third class not even getting out of their rooms. Yeah. Because they didn't they weren't properly alarmed. Uh like they weren't told basically, weren't wakened and things like that. And 
were just left there and they didn't even know there was anything wrong because they were asleep. Um, so you wake up but when the water comes in though. No? Well, fuck. It'll be, yeah, but it'll be too late for you. Oh, I. I mean, once the water's in, like you're. Even so, you're, I've met you're you know people who are like I'm a heavy sleeper. Yeah. So the stats down, I think, are down near the bottom. Yeah, here we go. Right, so, uh, right, so if you're like, uh, if you're a woman, in like first class, there you can see there, there's like 144, and 140 of them got saved. Right. So like that's. What do you think the other four were doing? Gossiping, uh, probably. Yeah, sitting up. Some of them actually. One of them. One of them is definitely somebody who stayed with her husband. Really. One of them definitely is. Yeah. Uh, story about her and then uh, that's, that's 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 made me emotional uh, made here it, it's mental idiot like, like but um, it's mental like some give him a kiss and away you go uh, give him a wee quick but one, one of quick, the pe- one uh, of the people who did <laughs> who did get off the boat <laughs> it just yeah. so sorry see if you see if you move down there Dan see if uh, um, so look at the crew look at the crew 885 sorry, crew that, that guy's a bad guy imagine your wife was like here they're letting me up and I'm going to stay with you and he just goes ah <laughs> just say nah don't do it uh, 885 crew yep. and only how many 192 they saved Mass. so like that's a pretty bad percentage of the crew getting wiped out apparently did you know this the White Star Line stopped paying the crew of the Titanic from 2.20 a.m. So they're sound. What would you have tried to throw in there for a queue jump to get in the lifeboat? I definitely would have dressed up as a woman. I'd have dressed up as a woman. Yeah. No doubt no, about it. Here, can you imagine these in one of MWE courses? Oh, yeah. They'd, no they'd trouble. be trying to snog you, the, the uh-huh. lifeboat operators. They wouldn't let you oh, off. She must be French. Your tits are hurry. Right. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> me sitting there going, ooh. I am Madame Barley. <laughs> Madame Barley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fucking unbelievable! So, uh, you can also see there if you were second or sorry, uh, yeah, th- third class and second class men, ninety-two percent losses in the second class, eighty-four percent in the. Uh, in the in the third class, so like, just a solid chance you're gonna die of your man on this. So that's why there's a gender peg up now. Anyway, the um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> so so one one person who did get off the boat and I didn't get a picture of him, but you remember him from the movie because he's played by the guy who plays Van Pelt in uh, Jumanji, is mm. Bruce Ismay. Mm-hmm. So he got off the boat. And like lived in fucking disgrace. People thought he was a disgrace because he owned the boat. He was he was one of the top people in the White he Star Line. CEO of yeah, he White was a, Star Line. A wanker, like uh, the, the his business partner was meant to be on it and cancelled his trip at the last minute and said he would get the you know get the next one. Uh, mm-hmm. So a couple of interesting Alarm things. Bills? The news story went out about it immediately, right? So. Uh, so we'll have a picture of this newsboy. This is a famous thing. They actually have a mural of this oh, kid yeah, in yep. East Belfast. Seen it. He, Ned Parfit. Uh, a, what do you call the it? Kid? A London newsboy. Titanic disaster. Great loss of lives. Um, and then we also have an advert from the New York Times that went out on the 15th, which was an advert advertising the Titanic to go back the way, to go back to... Oh, we don't have it. Well, I had it in my document anyway, right? I'm sorry. As in, they already had that ready to go out, so they ran it? Yeah, like they couldn't pull it. So, um, Uh. great. I mean, why would you pull it? They've already paid for the space. Let them advertise it, keep their coin. Anyway, right? Taste and whatever. A lot of great hats and stuff in the background there. Um, So, basically, like, uh, the stories I've heard out of the crew... Uh, one one story that I read about was a guy who basically broke his leg real early into this happened and the water started coming into one of the cold chambers or whatever and he broke his leg and just had to like they tried to, they, they tried to save him and they couldn't fucking get him out and basically well, the broken leg I get out other I think he was pro, I think he'd like fully shattered his leg and pelvis because he fell from quite high in one of the engine rooms mate, I, I took a corner with a broken leg two seasons ago that's fact <laughs> that's fact that's fact. Ask people. Well, well you would have lived, right? But yeah. this guy, this guy died. Other people couldn't save him anyway. <laughs> uh, other people that I read about. Hop, bro. Hop. Other people that I Hop. read about. 
some of some of the stories I read about are absolutely tragic. Of like most of them are like people I know, but like people like you know fucking mothers and fathers putting their kids on the boats and things. This is one of the boats uh, with the collapsible sides. So they actually only I was saying earlier that that space and the ability to offload sixty four boats, which actually would have been enough for nearly double the passengers. Right. They only had twenty boats. So it was only even at best it wouldn't have been enough for everybody. But the whole but the, the two things about that was they really believed it couldn't be sunk. Yep. And also according to naval law at the time, they actually had more boats on it than was legally like mandated. So it was like uh, because the whole point of lifeboats at this time wasn't to like keep you in the water for hours. It was just to like transport you to the next boat while your boat's going down. Right. So people they didn't think this could have happened. Uh, now, right, right, right. this is where we get into the sort of more conspiratorial shit where we look at what was really maybe going on at the time as well. So there's meant to have been a, a ship a, uh, that was out on a, a legal whaling expedition that's meant to have been like close, right there and did nothing because they didn't want to be arrested for whaling because they knew if they were there People would go. What, what were you even doing here? Definitely and not they're whaling. Like, Definitely. Well, your 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 quarter zip says whaling crew, like a <laughs> whaling trip. Nineteen twelve, and the back says shagger on the back. It says shagger. Unbelievable. So, uh, so that's one Make one shagger. thing. The California is this other boat that was also yes. right there. Right. Uh, and within distance, but they had switched off for the night, being like, "Well, fuck lemons," and they, they saw they saw right? rockets and all. So at the time, 24-hour radio operators weren't a thing. Yeah. So oh. the guy had done like a 16-hour shift and was like, I'm done for the day. Yeah. Right. Because that was his shift pattern. Right. And so after the Titanic... But what about when they saw the flares? They, they were just like, oh, that's... There was that's... loads of... It was like an amazingly clear night, mm. apparently. It was like the clearest night in 10 years or something. And so that caused all kinds of problems with like the flares didn't show up properly. Wow. Or they, they thought that... When the ships thought that the Titanic was setting off fireworks or something, was it? a bigger boat, I think closer. Mm. So instead of being twenty miles away, it was ten miles away, and they didn't think it was in trouble. They mm. didn't realize it was a Titanic, pretty much. And uh, basically, they got they got some shit for this. I mean, they changed the they changed the law so that you had to have boats for at least everybody on board, and life jackets for everybody on board. And then they changed it as well so that the radio operation had to be twenty four hours a day. Um, always manned or whatever, and then uh, or woman. So out of the all, always uh, always operated, and um, it would have been a man anyway at this time. So um, and look, I worked out. The man again. <sighs> Think of other dicks. Anyway, I, I don't even. So. They they basically I think out of all I think they only pulled like a few people out of the water alive like it wasn't many like ten or something uh loads Wim of Hoff people method, mate. what Wim Hof method yeah so like uh, a lot of people didn't get in the lifeboats at the start because yeah. they thought the ship's unsinkable so why, why am I getting on this lifeboat so they were like half full three quarters full that's the other thing yeah uh. so loads of them, loads of them went into the water you know I saw a ship I saw a boat being offloaded with twelve. Right. They, they were tasted in Belfast. Anyway, right. Yeah. Andrews, uh, fucking Inst bastard now anyway, right. <laughs> um, I, I won a quiz uh, with people from Inst when I was in first year and I won it again in second year. It was a, a inter, inter uh, emu uh, in, cross community yeah. quiz winner. Now anyway, I got, I got a huge pack Question, of can we continue the subject? Yes. Thank you. So, uh, sorry Vespasian. So we... Um, we get to the point now, so the, the California should have been there and didn't do anything really. And then, so the ship, the, the ship that came and saved the people out of the boats and a few out of the water was the Carpathia. So they were on the Carpathia, I think, for like a few days before they got back to New York. Like, I think it was like three or four days. Why? Just be, like they were waiting like on people to get on and they were looking after them and all. And then they fucking just went a lot slower to make sure there wasn't another problem. So they got there after a few days. And then that's when uh, Billy Zane realizes that he put the gem into the coat, and I put the coat on her. Anyway, unbelievable, Billy Zane, right? So um, Rose is displeased. What to do? Anyway, right? 
have loads of lines out of it. So um, they uh, basically that's when the inquiries started yeah. then into what happened. Uh, and so pe- there was a, an inquiry in America, an inquiry in London. Lightoller said that he had the whitewash brush in hand because he didn't want to um, affect uh, the fortunes of the White Star Line or the staff on the boat. So basically they covered their horses as much as they could. Uh, so the story of Captain Smith, uh, the story is uh, the stories that went around about him were what you saw in the movie where he's supposed to have walked in onto the bridge knowing that the the basically knowing that if if he didn't go down with the ship, he's he'd be bastardized forever, which is still sort of a thing. Do you remember that that guy? Now that guy was an absolute wanker, but that guy who was drunk or whatever and yeah. fucking sunk the ship and people died. Was that the Concordia? Was yeah, that? and he was already away, and he was basically he was off the boat. Yes, and you're like yes. you need to be the last person off this fucking yeah. vessel. It's sort of like you know. Uh, the the Sully thing, you know, the guy who landed the plane in the the river, uh, he um he was the last person off it, and that was like a real like uh, an actual big deal. Like, so like Captain Smith went down with it. Loads of famous people died on it. So J J Astor, the wealthiest guy on it, he died. W T Stead died. Guggenheim died. Guggenheim's the guy in the in the movie who sits down with a top hat on and drinks. And his man is like his manservant, the valet that was with him, did that as well. Is he not like one of the? If he's that wealthy, were they not like the, on the side? They going, they helped people. They helped people put jackets on and put oh, them into right. lifeboats, There's and this. then went. We if if we walk off this, like we're ruined anyway because like people will go, oh, I rich guy saves himself, and why I think there, I there is a story that? of one guy. <laughs> I'm being serious. There's a story of one guy who got was in a lifeboat with like twelve other people and like a dozen crew members, right. and they just set off. And apparently, he paid them all. The sum I heard was a fiver, all the crew members Mantle. to just get out of there. Mantle. There, there's a guy who uh, I read this that I I wonder if this is the story. By of By the way, that. sorry. There'll be people listening to and watching this going. Fuck's sake, he's saying he would just get off and he would look for any opportunity to get off. And they're acting like the, the person they're on YouTube like they've died would be like, yes, on the boat. Yes, they, yeah. they're acting like if they were in this situation, no, I'd die. I'd die. I'd happily I'd suck it up. I, I love what you went. I could hack that. That's <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> I, uh, I, they're, they're, I think this is, I, and I could be wrong here, this is definitely a real story that happened, but I think it's the story of the radio operator. Uh, so when he got up on the deck, he was helping to get one of the last collapsible boats out. And basically the boat capsized and then they did turn it over, but there was still water in it. And he got on it with one of the guys, or sorry, it isn't the radio operator. It's one of the guys from the, um, the stokers. one of those, one of the stokers. So he, one of, one of the guys who was helping the guy with the broken leg and couldn't get him out. Is that Arthur John Priest? It is. And he, and, and he got up onto the boat. Oh, and he was in the boat with a guy, and basically one of them lived and one of them didn't. So they were they were both stuck in water in the lifeboat, just like in the freeze, and one of them didn't make it through the night. Arthur John Priest, like he's one of those guys who was on a few accidents uh, like that and survived them all. Yeah, it's mental. And there was a there's a Arthur guy John Freeze. Arthur John. There's Priest. a brilliant yeah. interview. Now I would advise looking this I up. Thought he was Marnie's bro in America. <laughs> there's a there's an interview with the purser from the ship. Uh, recorded in I think the thirties or forties. Actually, it must be. Actually, it must be later. It might be the fifties because it's in color. Uh, I think his name's somebody Prentice. He was the purser. Uh, so like the fucking the money guy on the boat, and uh, he talks about surviving it, and it's fucking harrowing. Like, and he's an old man at that point, and he says, "Oh, he tells this is a great story." You should still watch him tell it, but because it's it's better. Obviously, Seriously? I wasn't there. Um, where he says that he saw this woman, and was talking to her, and put her on the. He basically took his life jacket off and gave her it, and put her on the boat, and she was asking for her husband, and he said, "Look, we'll we'll, you know, we'll find your husband, whatever. Get onto the boat. That's most important. Put her onto the boat." And then later, when the water came up around the thing, he swam out and got onto that same boat. 
And she said to him, have you seen my husband? And he said, no. Uh, and she took her coat off and put it around him and saved him. And he said, in a funny way, he saved her life. But she also saved his later that night. So that's a fucking... Later I'm getting night? chills even I, uh, even thinking about that. Prentice? Hugh Walter McElroy? No? No. Okay. I'm not lost. Anyway, old guy, right? So anyway, you can look that up though. Purser of the Titanic. Uh, so, uh, the inquiries. The inquiries basically whitewashed it, and they got a, the White Star Line got away with it. Essentially, they didn't get overly fucked over in any way, uh, which they definitely should have. Um, Nowadays, there'd be jobs for us all over. It. Oh, mate, they'd get rid to death if that happened these days. Well, they got some blame because I think their insurance company had to pay out. Yeah, right, for like lost whatever right. but it didn't it didn't totally like it didn't it didn't stop those people it didn't it didn't it didn't make Bruce Esme and the nobody like the guy was rich until he died like it's a uh, well of course what, it's what? mad how we have made an industry out of it yeah in so so t- so two seconds right so we get we get to the industry right One, so two. so so, uh, so years later, we'll go years later, people have tried to go find it. They can't find it. They actually tried to investigate, find it, and raising it to get the bodies and stuff like that. They got a lot of bodies out of the water, but this was to try to get more of them because uh, they knew some would be stuck inside the ship and what have you. And then they realized that it's like 12,000 feet. So it's at 400 uh, regular atmospheres. That's the pressure. Something mental. How many mega, mega pascals. How many, yeah, if it's 12,000 feet, what's that in miles? That must be... Is that like a mile down, is it? I have no I don't know idea. how many feet are in a mile. Well, how many yards is that then? 4, I don't 000? know. 4,000 yards? I don't four know any kilometers? I don't know. 2.2 2 miles. That's like... That's like a fucking... That's like... That's like a path to storm it twice. <laughs> on a Norway bit. Right, now, anyway. <laughs> right, so... um, All the way down, right? So... When they also thought that the boat sank as one piece, uh, which was later found to be false. Now, so this is, I think this is a good wee conspiracy now, right? Did you know that the, the two guys that found it, so Jean-Louis Michel and the, the main guy was this guy, Robert Ballard, who is like a, I don't know, have you ever read any of the Clive Costler Dirk Pitt books? Hey, do you think that? Well, he's basically like Dirk Pitt. The James oh. Bond of the sea, right? Right. Like a, like an, a an underwater archaeologist slash special agenty guy, right? Uh, Bubble 07. Oh! <laughs> oh! Pat the head. This guy. Pat the head. Oh. Pat the head of the Netflix yeah, soy boy for me. Soy boy's getting sucked off. That Woo! was Bubble 07. That is absolutely <laughs> epic, right? So he wrote the book, Raise the Titanic, I think, and also like... Uh, all, all these other uh, maritime, like underwater archaeology, underwater geology sort of stuff, right? And uh, this guy, Robert Robert Ballard, is like a real-life fucking dark pit where he goes and finds proper big shipwrecks. Like, uh, So he found a couple of other ones, but when he was looking for the Titanic, he basically knew roughly where it was. And um, he knew that it was a big area to search, though, and uh, the American government, now this is in the 80s, the American government uh, made a wee deal with him whereby if he did a secret mission for them to find a sunk nuclear submarine, that if he had any time left over, I'm sure you're already out there, you might as well look for the Titanic. But that all worked out because it made it, that's a great cover story for them. Uh, Robert Ballard, the underwater guy, he's doing his thing out looking for the fucking Titanic. And so when he so he basically knew where the Titanic was and just needed the money to go find it, and so he went and he found this uh, this sunk nuclear sub. And the whole point to find that was find out if the weapons on board have been fucking exploded, find out if the nuclear reactor on board is going to be a problem. And it turned out that it was all safe. Uh, but they they dived they they I mean dived they were in like sub submarine shit. They got right down there. And found that that submarine, and then we're like, well, with a number of days, like he found that super quick, and then he was like, with a number of days to find the Titanic, and he found it, and they immediately did like some uh like artifact removal from the ship, 
uh, and that's where like there's actual stuff that's been brought up, like plates and all, and like people's personal items that were left there. Like basically, you know the the stuff at the start of the movie Titanic yeah, is a yeah. real a real dive there. Like so, like um, James Cameron's obviously been there a ton of times, uh, but it's like all that way down. You need all that special equipment. You saw what happened last year when they didn't have the right equipment. I mean, you know, you try to go two miles down into the sea in a lunchbox and um, see what happens. But um, get turned into a pepperami. Now, uh, heartless. But anyway, uh, so he found that. And then, obviously, the finding of the Titanic then becomes burning cover for the the underhanded secret mission. So that's a nice wee like bit of it. Lot. And then he went back there. After he discovered it, they looked at, Potentially raising it, but they realized he he also was the first person to properly realize it was broke in two bits, um, and uh, there's a brilliant so the the reconstruction they do in the movie, where the guy with the big beard tells you how it was pierced with the ice and how it went down. That was what they thought at that time, but then James Cameron revisited it, and they had you can see it on YouTube now, like a new reconstruction of what what they. Underwater, well, I have the it then, even though it's broken, it's too fragile, and there's also all the stuff to do with the cost, the equipment you would need to raise something of that weight, and then also the sort of moral ambiguity around like people thinking it's Someone a hanging it's out a, of it, it's a, it's a graveyard. Well, this is the thing, I don't think there's any bodies left on it, I think they've all been uh picked at by things and stuff like that, so uh, mental, but um. Crazy, crazy, uh, crazy time, and then yeah. So the last bit of this is to look at our, our. Oh, sorry. So Ballard, Ballard went back a few times. Obviously, then after that, like, um, uh, like he, so he discovered it on the first of September eighty five, and then I think he was back there in July eighty six. Great year, by the way. Uh, eighty six. Uh, back there, investigating it and all over and over again. And since then, loads of people have been to it. I mean, loads of people, a handful of people have been to it. But it's like. <laughs> You know, a relatively well visited shipwreck. Yes. Um, and then uh, he went on and found other famous shipwrecks and whatever. But um, this is getting me wet to talk about the, the Lusitania thing, which I think we should do a, a, Let's do a future episode because it's a proper, real fucking conspiracy. Um, One of the other criticisms always been, but was it built properly? Yeah. Or was it? Was there issues well, with the coal? I sorry. Is this the coal thing about the fire? No, it's just people Look, thought that maybe Harlan and Wolf had done it on the cheap. Mm, well, wouldn't wouldn't be like a once here. But then when you look into it, they did it on there's a specific type of deal, open book policy, is what right. it's called. Where pretty much they they told, build it and then tell you what it's going to be. They told uh, what is it, White Star, whatever. Well, you can look at our books and see what it costs, and you pay us five percent more, and that's our profit. Right. Okay. So it would have actually made sense for them to do it as expensive as possible yeah, to yeah. get as much profit uh, as possible. Well, yeah. I watched a documentary a while back about this theory because apparently there was a fire on the Titanic in the coal room while it was, I think, still in Belfast, oh, potentially yeah, yeah, in yeah. Southampton. Where, I've heard this. Uh, and some people think that this fire... Some people think that the damage from this fire is visible on the outside of the ship still, which I didn't buy into particularly with the footage they showed they're like look at this dark spot i'm like yeah and when the boat moves the dark spot moves so fuck up but anyway uh it's probably a problem with the camera but anyway that's a problem with the camera and um, that's a problem with the underside of your ball bag now anyway the um so so they um why are you enchanted by your own so, hands so the boat the ferry you look like a man who's ne who doesn't have hands who's just been they're, given ma they're magical we think so he um so some people say that th this fire happened and some people think that it damaged the side of the boat and one of those watertight compartments wasn't watertight. So that's one theory. Um, but then in terms of the, the industry that's built around it now, so obviously the movie is like the fourth highest grossing film of all time. Yeah, it's a proper epic. And um, was the highest grossing one until yeah, Avatar? There's nothing I fear. Great song. Say the do -do 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 -do. Oh, I'm made emotions. I'm actually it's been eighty four years <laughs> since I got bucked in the back of a car. Wow. Anyway, she loves it. Um yeah. I love that. You, you know that, that 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 plot hole with the Titanic is that the you know, the whole story is told by an old woman to Bill Paxton 
and that must mean then that there's a bit in that story where she goes, so this guy who, the guy who drew that, reeled me in the back of a car like and, and i put my hand in the window was yep, all sweaty and all splattered the sweat on the window fucking he jizzed on me and all right and um that was needless so what to summarize what um i like that she lived a full life after that what do you think's mystery what do you think's history the biggest the biggest mystery about it is why does it cost so much to go to that museum do you know what i think they should have in the museum <laughs> they should have a touch tank with water in it that is as cold as the water would have been. That is a great shout. Isn't it? That is a great that was, That's shout. Chloe's idea now to be fair, so, but I, I will I will copyright that. Um, that's 10 out of 10. A touch tank. I uh, offer you hand sanitizer. You're definitely after. the sort of guy that would visit a museum and at the end say, uh, will you, you guys consider putting in a touch tank? I, uh, I enjoy the information panels <laughs> experientially. It's not what I'd hoped for. <laughs> Uh, I didn't love the experience. There, there's, do you know? Do you know what I really want? Do you know what they should have done? Now this is this is going the extra mile, but for the money they were spending, right? Get somebody. Get Winslet. Get somebody from the movie to narrate some of the shit. Oh uh, yeah. Even, instead, even, instead even of just uh, some dickhead. The guy that was in Jumanji. Get Van Pelt instead. Instead of like fucking Billy Zane at there, he's doing fuck all else, right? Yeah. And then and then like, but Winslet would do it, or or she wouldn't, right? I think she would. DiCaprio does the uh, the NASA museum in America, and I obviously that's uh, big point. obviously he's dead, so he couldn't do it. They're dropping. They're Who? DiCaprio. They're drop. He dies in the movie. Oh, uh, we, we won't even get into that conspiracy. Was there an offer him on that door for both it of them? It was a great bit Absolutely. of stand-up I used to do. They, uh, that's that NASA coin dropping from space, right? So they, I I sort of think that like that that museum should be better. Somebody like that should narrate, but instead it's like. It's like U one hundred five actors being like, you know, tink tink tink. Could you pass me through another rivet? Tink tink tink. <laughs> it's very hot and sweaty work down here. Yeah, you know, and you're like, well, yeah. you f- this is right anyway. Still good. It was and all right when it left here. Oh, it didn't sink until it went to Southampton, so it did not, right? Yeah. And it's actually, it's actually the end. They've made the end and all it better, according to a friend of mine who's been early and recently. I have been recently. But there's no touch tank, and I think it should have that. Anyway, I think the stuff that I find conspiratorial and weird about it, I don't really buy that fire story. I don't know. I don't know. Stuff I find weird about it is the inquiry stuff. They they should have been punished harder for that. I also think that the market of it is being unsinkable, and then all these powerful people are on it and get sunk. Uh, is potentially weird and some people think is like a a cull of the upper class but I don't really buy that either I think it's just a terrible terrible maritime accident and because of the shit safety laws and shit like societal pressures and stuff that that means that loads of people died like too too many people died on it like 1500 people too many people that's, that's double the amount of people that were in my school when I was there yeah. That's like two acquaintances of people dead on a boat. <laughs> mental. That's mental. Yeah. So another the the uh, the the bit that is a real conspiracy about it is the the thing about the nuclear sub. I love that. I love that story. That's, great. That's brilliant. I never knew that. So I think this is mostly history. I think the movie is actually mostly history, and it's just like all he's done is put Human a, Ro- a Romeo and Juliet story over the top of that, yeah. which I think is totally legit. You know, and here. You get to say I'm big milkers. My ma covered my eyes when that happened. I'm like, what are you doing? My you know, dad you know the story of me going to say it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, my dad covered mine. I picked through and he was jacking off. Oh. That was a wee bit of Winslet, does he? Jacking? Sorry, I'm joking. Yeah, but how qu- <laughs> how weirdly did you just accept that my dad was masturbating? I know, I knew you were joking. I just oh, went, I, I, just de- I just deep dived into the joke with you. He deep dived but, into his pants. But uh, you know the story of me going to see that movie yeah. where my ma basically fucked me over and I missed the first fucking 10 minutes. Yeah. I was still there though whenever she got them out. The kid wins it, not my mum. Anyway, right. <laughs> so that's uh that's that thing. Yeah, feeling again. Up. So thanks for joining us here. I think it's mostly history. Would that's you agree? great. Uh, mostly history, yeah. Good times. Right, well, we'll see you in the next one when we'll be dissecting some else. other mystery or history. Bye. I'm doing the Karen Bartlett photo post. Mm-hmm.